What's for breakfast? What's for lunch? What's for dinner? What's for snack? Wherever you are in the world, whatever time zone you're in, before anything else, This is Pastor Din Padayag. Welcome to Soul Food First. Yesterday, we started talking about the question, Can we lose our salvation? We started by talking about what and who we are in Christ. We learned that, number one, we are saved by grace through faith, not of our works of any kind, but by grace alone, in Christ alone, and by faith alone. Number two, we are redeemed. God bought us, paid the price of our sin in full with, you know, His own precious and spotless blood, and then He brought us to Himself. Number three, we are reconciled to God. The Lord Himself paved the way, you know, for us to be brought near to Him through His cross. And that is resulting in having peace with Him. Number four, we are justified. We are justified by faith. It means we are declared righteous by God Himself. And so, because of that, we are no longer sinners but declared righteous as if we have not sinned at all in our entire life. Number five, we are a new creation. It means that God created us afresh. God created us totally brand new in Christ. Number six, we are promised eternal life you see even we die in the flesh we will live again and we will live for eternity with christ in heavenly places number seven we are marked by god and sealed by the holy Spirit. we learn that our mark is the indwelling presence of the person of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit lives in us. Number eight, we are kept by the Holy Trinity. Yes, our keepers are God the Father, God the Son, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, and God the Holy Spirit. And they ensure that no one and nothing can separate us from them. Number Nine, we are guaranteed of glorification. Regardless of what we are going through on this earth, beloved, here is the guarantee that we will be glorified with Christ. It is guaranteed to those or to all the believers in Christ. Now, having said all this and many more that we can talk about this uh, positions and standing we have in Christ will go back to our question can we lose our salvation and we will answer this question biblically and dispensationally meaning that we will answer this question according to what the Bible says and according to the truth in this present dispensation of grace or the grace truth now, the direct answer to this question is no, we can't lose our salvation. And here are some of the reasons. Number one, the Bible says we are saved by grace through faith. It means that our salvation is not affected by works of any kind. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9 here, the Bible says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, 
and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. Again, not of works, lest anyone should boast. And we can find the same truth in the book of Titus chapter 3 verse 5. It says, not by works of righteousness. Again, not by works of righteousness which we have done. But according to his mercy, he saved us. And so, if we are not saved by good works, we can't be unsaved by good works. That's a wonderful truth to understand. Number two, the Bible says we are redeemed. We are bought by Christ himself, paid in full with his own precious blood, and then he brought us into his family, the family of God. And for us to lose salvation, beloved, God himself would have to revoke his purchase and take back his payments, claim, you know, his precious blood back and, and die on the cross. And we know that is impossible. Hebrews chapter 12 verse 2 says, Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The payment, the payment transaction was successful and so our standing before God our position before God we are permanent status number three the Bible says we are reconciled to God in Ephesians chapter 2 verses 11 down to verse 13 here the Bible says therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time, in the time past, you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. And then in verse 13 here, we have the change. The Bible says, but now... This is our present time. This is in the dispensation of grace. In Christ Jesus, you who were once afar off have been brought near by what? By the blood of Christ. These are some of the changes that took place because of our reconciliation with Christ. If we lose our salvation, beloved. It means that all these will be changed. Our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ will be changed. Our proximity with the Lord Jesus Christ will be changed. He must push us away and he has to take back his peace that he has given to us to all of us who believe in him. And then he has to undie on the cross. Again, that would be impossible. It is a lot easier to believe that no one and not, nothing can separate us from God. And this is what the Bible says. Let's go to the book of Romans chapter 8 verse 35 first. It says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? And then jump to verses 37 down to verse 39. The Bible says, Yet in all these things we are more, more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death shall 
or any other creative thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Beloved, this is what the Bible says. This is the truth for today. This is what God says. And no one and nothing can separate us from our love uh, for God and His love for us and our reconciliation with Him. Number four, the Bible says we are justified and for us to lose salvation, God would have to go back and discredit His word and undeclare what He had previously declared. Those absolved of guilt would have to be tried again and found guilty and God would have to reverse the sentence handed down to all those who believe in him that will not happen Romans chapter 11 verse 29 says for the gifts and the calling of God are uh, irrevocable or without Repentance. The word irrevocable means something that can't be revoked, changed, reversed. It is something that is final or permanent. Number five. The Bible says we are a new creation. For us to lose salvation, the new creation would have to be destroyed because, you know, we are not saved anymore if that's the case. Well, the Bible is very clear about this. God has already declared, Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Wow, what a blessed truth we have in the scriptures. Number 6, the Bible says we are promised eternal life. For us Christians, we have eternal life, as the Bible says, and to lose our salvation. Eternal life would have to be redefined because it doesn't match with the meaning and the definition of the word eternal. The Christians is promised by God that we are going to live with Him forever. And if eternal is not forever, it means that we have to redefine it. And it means that the Bible is not true. And it means that God is lying. And that is not the case. The Bible is true and God is faithful to what He said. Not to mention that eternal life is a gift. As indicated to us in the book of Romans chapter 6 verse 23. So, the definition of the gift must also be redefined. But there is no need to do that. The Bible and all its truth are just fine as is. What needs to change is us. That is the truth. Number seven. The Bible says we are marked by God and sealed by the Holy Spirit. Now, for us to lose salvation, God would have to erase the mark, withdraw His Spirit in us, cancel the deposit, break His promise, revoke the guarantee, remove the inheritance, forego the praise, and listen His glory. That will not happen. What God says is final and can't be changed. Number eight, the Bible says we are kept by the Holy Trinity. You know, if we are the keepers of our salvation, we will lose it in a matter of hours, if not minutes. Because we are still in the flesh. We are still in this wicked and crooked world because we are not perfect. And so we can lose our salvation right away. That is why... God did not entrust to us the keeping of ourselves, the keeping of our salvation. He knows we cannot keep it for long. So He takes the keeping personally. 
he takes the keeping himself. You know, many times people would say, well, just hold on to God's hands and you will be okay and everything will be okay. Truth be told, that is a very dangerous way of living a Christian life. How long can we hold on to the hands of God? And what if we cannot hold on for long? Then we are done. Then we are over. Then we are finished. And that is a very dangerous uh, theology. The truth is God is able to take care of us. That's why he takes it personally to take care of our salvation because he knows that we cannot take care of our own salvation. God knows that so uh, he is the one holding our lives. He knows that we are unable, unable, incapable of keeping our salvation. So he is holding our hands. He is holding our salvation and not just our hands and other parts of who we are, but He is holding our entire life. If we can lose our salvation, the ability of God to keep and the veracity, again, the ability and the veracity of the Godhead would be questionable and God's word would be unreal reliable and then God cannot be trusted with anything how much more with our entire life praise the Lord we can trust God the Father we can trust God the Son and we can trust God the Holy Spirit and we can trust his word the Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, If we are faithless, He remains faithful and He cannot deny Himself. Number nine, the Bible says we are guaranteed of glorification. If we can lose salvation, then Romans chapter 8, verse 30 is in error because God could not guarantee glorification for all those whom he saves, predestines, calls, and justifies. And so he is lying and can't be trusted. He's lying to himself, he's lying to us, and he is lying through his word. And so we cannot trust the God in the Bible. Praise the Lord, that is not the case. God is able and capable to uh, glorify those whom He saved. Believing that we can lose our salvation is a terrible doctrinal position that one can do or believe and a very poor way of living a Christian life. Beloved, tune in tomorrow as we continue with this series. Thank you very much for watching. Enjoy your soul food. You are watching Soul Food First on Grace TV. Please follow us on the Grace TV Facebook page. And please subscribe to our Grace TV YouTube channel. Until next time, God bless you. Bye!